Hello there, one and all, and welcome, I hope, to episode 404 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, live, I hope, on YouTube. I hope what I'm referring to there, and this is not going to mean anything to anybody who didn't try to tune in yesterday, was that this is an episode that actually should have gone out last night. Uh, but apparently, uh, YouTube was experiencing issues globally. They must have been very, very strange issues because some of you saw last night's and saw and heard last night's video perfectly fine and uh, others didn't but that video is now available and as i say th th this preamble is going to mean nothing to people watching uh, the recording of this video but yes we had we had gremlins we had issues and so now hopefully everything is going to work fine today i need to find out who the first comment the first comment goes to carl who says i'm scared don't be too scared rebecca says love the thumbnail very young frankenstein Kim says, I'm late. Well, how am I late? How am I? I said I'd be going on at 6 p.m. UK time. Anyway, uh, Tashara says, what could be the Graziel bottle? You will find out soon enough. Uh, Ryan says, are we going to get Zoologist Bat? Mm, we got that last year. And I like this comment from Gavin, who says, oh, I've lost Gavin's comment. Where is it? Who says, uh, English ghosts generally go boo or ooh. Ghosts in Japan have the sinister... Ke, 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 ke. That is quite sinister, actually. Am I am I saying that correctly? While in Urdu they go ho ho ha ha, <laughs> and in Brazilian Portuguese, hue, hue, hue. is that right? Um, hmm. Ryan's. Uh, what do they do in What do they do in French? It's, I'm trying to think. Do I know what they do in Polish? What what do ghosts do in do in Polish? I think they just do a general kind of whoa or something. I don't know. Um, uh, as Natalie says, yes, another another try with uh, with the video. Uh, Night Night says, YouTube's fail is my win because I can now make the live. Well, there you go. There you go. David says hello to everybody as well. Um, and Eric says, lucky day. I was just baking a loaf cake, which you are going to share with all of us, um, clearly. Anyway, lo lots of lots of Halloween emojis all over my screen at the moment. That is what we're doing. We are presenting my top 10 list uh, of perfumes for, for Halloween. I didn't actually think I would do another Halloween list. I did my first one last year. But who knew how much all of you love a Halloween list? Because I've had so many requests for another one. So I thought, OK, let, let's, let's, let's do it for a laugh. I even went out and bought a pumpkin. I think that must be the very first Halloween decoration I have ever bought in my life. I've, I've never really celebrated Halloween or marked Halloween. Do you say we celebrate Halloween? Ne never did it, never did it as a child, never been trick or trick or treating. Um, it wasn't it wasn't anything that I grew up with. But of course there had to be a theme. And this year I've decided to um go with the idea of vampiric sense, vampirical sense, vampire sense, Dracula sense. And I've taken, you know, as, as you can imagine knowing me, it, it is a very, very, very loose interpretation of that theme. And I've also allowed myself to go for scents that um, that could count as vampish. Um, yes, I mean, make of that what you will. We need to do we need to do one thing as well to get into the spirit of the episode. Um, the entire episode uh, will be delivered to you, by the way, in my finest Bella Lugosi accent. Can you imagine me doing that actually for a whole hour? No, but we are going to do this. We are going to do this. Is this going to work? Pow! Right. We we have we need to do one in in monochrome. We've never never done one, so let's see how that looks. Just to really get into the into the mood. Gavin says it was ET that very much exposed the Brits to the American version of Halloween. I've never thought of that. I mean, I, I I didn't grow up in the UK. I was born here, but I didn't grow up here. The very first time I encountered ET was actually in the Middle East where I grew up. But I suppose that must have had a huge influence. That must have had a massive influence. Uh, Claire says, I grew up in the USA, so Halloween was big for kids there. Um, and the boss says that he's feeling better. I didn't know you, you were unwell, but sending you good wishes. Um, Night Night says, I love this so much. Rachel says, love it, Mr. P, you need fangs, and this is perfection. I actually tried to get some fangs, and I went into two shops a couple of hours ago, but but they were all out of fangs. I guess, I guess the kiddies have all bought the fangs. Anyway, we need to get on, because I have been waffling for nearly five minutes. So, the kind of sense that maybe 
the good count himself would wear. Uh, things that could be quite vampish have marked fangs, but also equally that could be quite seductive. Um, I should. I should warn you. Oh, can you do a Sesame Street count impression each time you should? No, I'm not going to do that. I should warn you that um, most of what's in my head to do with Dracula is very, very, very heavily influenced by the Francis Ford Coppola film from the 90s, which is no bad influence to have. Um, and even though I've read the book several times, I've taught the book, actually. I've taught the book um, at at a level, we there was it was a, a thing where we had to sort of compare Frankenstein and Dracula. Even though I have experienced the book, uh, you know, as, as as a teacher and as a reader many times, it is still that a Gary Oldman interpretation that sticks in my head. So, well, I think I think a lot of the things I'm going for here are very much inspired by the look of that film, by the costumes that were done. I think by Aiko Ishioka, the Japanese designer, the amazing costumes, probably some of the best Dracula costumes ever. Um, you could choose something woody for Keanu in that film, says Gavin. Yes. Oh, gosh. The number of times my friends and I try to do imitations of Keanu Reeves saying Carfax Abbey in that film. Watch that film again. Try to get to the bit where Keanu Reeves says Carfax Abbey in the worst English accent you have. But I still quite like him in that film. Right. First up is the one that's in the thumbnail. Some of you have been wondering which Lutins it is. It is not De Profundis. That would have been a good choice. But I'm going with vampishness, vampiriciousness, vampiraciousness. And I have gone for the most vampish of all perfumery materials, tuberose. And this is Tuberose Criminelle from 1998, composed by none other than... Um, Monsieur Sheldrake himself. Please, 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 by the way, let me know what you think of these scents. What, let me know what your top vampire scents would be. If you were dressing up as a vampire for Halloween, um, what would be the perfume of choice for you? Kim says Nosferatu the Vampire from 1979 is so much better. Yes, and I have, and, and I haven't seen it, and, and I've heard that it is, it is a brilliant film. I haven't actually seen very many uh, Dracula films. Uh, Eric says, I had to read the book for a college course once and thought it was uh, thought it was wise to listen to the audio book, but then I listened to it on a road trip at night. <laughs> uh, and Eric says, I'm a bit worried this one is discontinued. Now, I wondered about discontinuations as well, and there's another one that's coming up where I don't know whether it's discontinued or recently discontinued. Um, this needs to be closer to the pumpkin, otherwise you're not going to be able to see it. Um, so, yeah, if you want to try this one, you, you you need to try it sooner rather than later, because if it hasn't gone, it may be on its way out. Uh, love, 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 tuberose criminal, says Ty, but I wouldn't associate it with vampires personally. Well, there we go. Anyway. These tuber... No, <laughs> shouldn't do. We mustn't do it. Do I get to do my children of the night? Um <sighs> I wore this. Now, bizarrely, bizarrely, I wore this not that long ago when I went to see Madonna at the O2 because I thought, well, she's a white floral girl. She loves tuberose and clearly she will be able to pick me out from the crowd and go, who's that wearing that amazing <laughs> tuberose perfume? But M Madonna as a vamp or as a, well, you know, you, you could go there. There's probably something in that. Is, is the um, polo neck Covering up where you've been bitten, says Gavin. Of course. And, and you know, this is this is why we have the photo neck today. Anyway, this is this is in a way the be all and end all of tuberose perfumes. There are several, several others that I love, but in terms of taking tuberose in a really, really kind of hissy, angry, teeth bared, vampish, diva direction, you 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 this is this is probably the end of the road. You probably cannot go any further than this. Frederick Mouse Carnal Flower is is maybe more sensuous, but it but it is also softer. It's more curvaceous. This is um. This is just because it's so camphoraceous and so medicinal at the start. It kind of takes you by surprise. And it's like a tuberose that's kind of putting a stake through your heart. Did you see what I did there? Um, 
And I think that's what I love about it. You, you, it's 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 claws. It's it's sharp canine teeth. Um, it 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 is a criminal tuberose. It is shocking. What are you folks saying? Madonna is big on portrait of a lady recently. So I gather, Madame Persolais wore it before she did. I wore it before Madame Persolais wore it. Madame Persolais stole it from me. Maybe Madonna stole it stole it from Madame Persolais. Maybe Madame Persolais has known Madonna all this time and has just not thought to introduce the two of us to each other. I feel divorced lawyers may need to be contacted. This had never occurred to me. Anyway, um, Ty says, she is the queen of tuberose. Madonna is more of a siren rather than a vampire. I think Gaga, her protege in a way, is more of a vampirish figure. Interesting, maybe we should do top 10 Madonna perfumes. Um, Original Poison by Dior could also be on the list, says Kim, you're absolutely right. It was on last year's list, so I thought we need we need to do a completely different list. Um, A says, Mr. P is trendsetter confirmed. Really? Why? Um, Rachel says, this is a great vampiric tuberose. Francesca Bianchi is a great brand. Beaufort, Grossmith, Fulnana, so many. Um, yeah, 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 I, I agree with most of those. And Gavin says, do a top 10 Madonna perfumes. What on earth would that be, though? Maybe she's going to come back to London to do two more shows in December, isn't she? So maybe I should do 10 songs inspired by my 10 favorite, 10 perfumes inspired by my 10 favorite Madonna songs. What do you think of that? But we are really digressing. We need to move on. So we started off with Tuberose, Criminelle, number two, number two, number two, completely different direction, but, but equally sort of sharp, biting, vampiracious is from, I'm wondering if it's the oldest one on the list. Yes, it is. None, none. Yeah, there's no other old one. This is from 1974, although it isn't. It isn't the 1974 formulation, sadly. Composed by Henri Robert, it is the eau de toilette of Cristal from Chanel. Now, I have a feeling I know what a lot of you are going to say to me straight away. Is it the EDP that's just been rebottled and, by many accounts, um, reformulated? So if you would like um, the, you know, what is now going to count as the old EDP, you'd better hurry up and treat yourself to it soon. Do these two need to be swapped? Is that going to look a little bit better? I must, must, must remember to take a picture of the final still life when this is, when this is done. Um, Magie Noir Vintage should definitely be on the list, says Vlad. Is your name really Vlad? Or are you just here to impale us <laughs> with... Um, hmm. um, we, we don't do vintages on these lists, right? As far as possible, we try to go for things that haven't been discontinued and things that are, you know, in current formulations. Uh, uh, Shan says, hopefully not butchered, but alas, well, yeah, so who knows? I will try to smell it as quickly as possible, as soon as possible. Anyway, Cristal, um, I, I, I love this as well, but, but this is, this is, vampiric dracula like in a totally different way so this is you know if you imagine if you imagine the coldness of transylvania um i seem to remember that in the francis ford coppola film and i believe in the book as well when jonathan harker first goes to to castle dracula it's 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 bitterly cold everything is covered in snow ice this is this is that landscape and it's 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 threatening vlad the inhaler oh very good we like that you need to get a T-shirt that says Vlad. Is Vlad really your name? I mean, you don't. If it isn't, you don't have to reveal your real name. But <laughs> Vlad the Inhaler is good. Quickly go and get VladTheInhaler.com now and start your own YouTube channel. Um, it's it's Chris. It's it's crystalline. It is it is um, it is a really really great. Um, citrusy sheep. I've often said that this is the kind of negative image of Clarence Eau de Namizante. The Clarence is is heavier on the citrus and goes more than in, uh, than, than it is on the on the sort of sheep side of things. Cristal is heavier on the sheep side, but it's got this it's it's brittle. I think I think it was actually when I mentioned it on a video here a while ago, one of you used the word brittle for it and that, that, that's, that's perfect. And and I guess maybe that conveys the that that aged brittle quality of of the vampire but 
but the vampire as as presented in the Andy Coppola film, because of course he's a misunderstood vampire, right? He he just he just wants to get back with his with his beloved, which was such a '90s thing to do to the story. That is not in the book, by the way. Um, Navid says, I know you don't like Black Orchid, but it also has a vampish vibe. I agree with you 100%, and I nearly actually included it on this list, but then there, there's another Tom Ford coming. There's a different Tom Ford coming. But yeah, completely agree with you. Ty says, Cristal is one of many ice queens from the 60s uh, and the 70s. I would even go so far as to say that it's a black ice queen. Très fatal. Oh, interesting. Good point. Rachel says, Darren Allen's Bathory? Bathory is perfect for this list. I'd say Cristal is the vampire at the ball while they're hunting in a more civilized manner. Right. Thank you. And I think that's the that's the idea that I had with some of these scents as well. Some of them, some of them are earthy, peaty, swampy, mossy, animalic, but some of them are also quite urbane and super sophisticated. Um because because that is what Dracula did as well, right? He 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 managed to infiltrate Victorian society as a as a kind of charmer. Again, with all those fantastic costumes and with Gary Oldman sporting really really cool glasses. Do you remember those like little half moon coloured glasses? So hopefully there are some here that are going to be of the you know that you will agree are of the sophisticated variety as well. Elias, hello by the way, says never saw Cristal that way, but your description is fascinating. I'd go with a different purple liquid serge for the occasion. Um, which one? Um, and Navid says about the Tom Ford, I guess it would be Noir de Noir. Mm, maybe, maybe. And RM says that he agrees with, or she agrees with Gavin for Voleur de Rose from uh, L'Artisan. Um, Castorium is great for Halloween, says Pradeep. We've got something really, really animalic coming up. Okay. Third on the list. Third on the list is one that I don't think I've mentioned on this channel before. And if I have, it's been it's been a long time since I've since I've mentioned it. It's from 2015 from a brand that doesn't get a huge amount of attention in the UK. In fact, I don't even know if they're stocked in the UK anymore. They certainly um, were for for a while. Um, the brand is Liquid Imaginaire. This is from 2015. The perfumer is Nadej Le Garlantezec, or Garlant, I'm sorry if I'm sort of butchering um, her surname. And this is Tellus from their O Ar Arborant range, their, their Ar Arboreum range, their tree range. And this is, this is fascinating. Um, I'm pretty sure that on last year's list, I included uh, the original bat from Zoologist. So I couldn't include it here, but I wanted something that felt as though it was rising from the depths of some, some horrible grave. Um, and, and this one does that, but, but also manages to be highly wearable and highly attractive at the same time. It is, it, it's in many ways, basically a very, very, very deep, earthy, brown patchouli um but it's also got that strange moldy feel to it dank damp feel to it i'm just i'm just looking at the kind of official notes here and apparently it's got earthy notes well yeah thank you but it but it also supposedly contains some costas and that that's always a, a strange material because it, it sort of feels really, really right and feels really, really wrong, smells of unwashed hair, but is at that kind of tipping point where unwashed hair kind of feels strangely attractive before it tips over into unattractiveness. It's it's a, it's a, it's a very twilight scent. And so that's appropriate because Dracula, of course, is a, is a, is a very twilight creature and, a, and a, you know, not, not dead, but also not alive. Um, just, just fascinating, fascinating. Um, and as I say, tons and tons and tons of patchouli, which just makes it feel like earth being being disturbed. You know, if you're doing a, a bit of gardening, if, if you're like me, you know, the, the once in a five year occasion when you do some gardening and you actually dare to get your hands dirty and you get some soil on damp, damp soil has got such a particular scent. It 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 isn't like mud. 
it, it, it certainly isn't anything like sand or or soil that you would buy you know f from a shop in a bag it, it's got such a complex odor profile and i think patchouli is something that comes very 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 close to to to, to capturing that what have you folks been saying uh, about it then uh rachel says the original bat from zoologist be still my heart i'd say scarab could be a good replacement if you want to give a mummy vibe i haven't smelled scarab i should check it out uh Kim says, nose in the soil, buried in the undergrowth, stirring smells of roots and fungus. It's almost like a line from the wasteland, that. Damp soil, scented with wilted flowers, burrowing animals and changing seasons. I cannot top that description. That is perfect. Uh, alcoholic Nun says, is that your costume for Halloween? Says, Amouage Memoir Woman would fit this theme nicely, I think. Stunning. I don't disagree. Uh, where is Amouage's memoir, says Rima. Christopher Chong will be upset. Uh, Ryan says, Amouage myths with that chrysanthemum, a deathly scent, Mr. P. Shan says, Bois d'Anson, I think, is like the priest from The Exorcist in my silly head. No, I like that, actually. That's a good one. I go along with that one. Um, Ty says, this reminds me, I had a chance to get a sample of the new iteration of Black Datura by Miller Harris, and I find that to be quite vampirical. Okay, that's a good shout as well. Uh, Gunnar 368 says, I find sheep mousse very earthy and mushroomy. Zoologist Scarab is enchanting, says Elisa. Um, and then Rachel says, The Wasteland, I'd love to see a top 10 cents for that poem. I, you know, I think that might be a little bit too trauma. I had to study that poem at A-level. I mean, I love it, but I, I really, really love it. But I think having to think of perfumes to go with it, I don't think my friends would ever forgive me. Um, yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll do the Madonna one first, and then we'll see how we feel about T. S. Eliot perfumes. Gosh, mm. um, <coughs> fourth on the list. Fourth on the list is somebody mentioned uh, poison a little while ago, and I said that that was done last year. But I, I, I think I think you, you you can't have a Halloween list without some mention of poison. So this is hypnotic poison, but this isn't the original EDT. Uh, this is the 2014 EDP, which I guess was composed by Francois Demachy, not particularly because I have anything against the EDT. In fact, I think in some ways I might prefer the EDT, but I've talked about the EDT a lot. So I thought, let's let's bring the EDP out. I'm kind of liking this black and white. I'm thinking maybe this should be the Persele's look from now on, that we only ever do videos in black and white. Um, Hypnotic Poison EDP is absolutely a vamp fragrance, says Ty. I'm glad you agree. I thought I thought it would work very, very well in this context. The idea of original Hypnotic Poison, many of you will remember, uh, it, the, the original was composed by Annick Minardo, was to um, evoke the smell of cyanide, which, which supposedly apparently smells of almonds. And so it's a very, very, very kind of it's it's almost a gourmand um, almond scent, and it, it's it's got that kind of sharp, sharp sweetness of almond, but a strong vanillic base as well. Um, oh, Smark says, how can we admire the design of your shirts if it's always in black and white? Good point. I think we won't do the black and white very much more. Um, the aroma that licorice gives off reminds me of adrenaline rushing through the body, says Ty. Maybe we're running from a vampire in this instance. Interesting. <clears throat> Gavin says, yes, the smell of cyanide often referenced in Agatha Christie works. You're absolutely right. Um, the EDP is probably more buxom, probably more curvaceous, and probably more about the base and the vanillic materials than the EDT. You know, you, you smell the EDP and you don't immediately go um, thinking almond. In fact, if if anything, it's more the kind of almondy facets of tonka bean, you know, the uh, the, the coumarin that, that that comes through, which also reminds you of almond. But but the EDP is also much more of a white floral um, than the EDT is. So we're back to our white florals again, in the, except in this case, apparently it's jasmine sandback, um, which which you do get. But it's we, we've we've talked about this before on um, this channel. It, it it it's it, it's surprisingly abstract you know it was released when did i say 2014 so not even 10 years ago but in that short space of time scents have become so much more literal and legible and uh, 
you know, showing their, their their cards, their hand, so much more obviously. Whereas this does feel like a much more convincingly abstract composition. So that you 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 see you can you can you can see the elements working. You can you can detect the licorice and the tonka bean and the jasmine and the orange blossom, but it comes together to create this vampish hole. And you you can't see this because I made the silly decision to go into monochrome with this, but but the bottle is a very, very, very fetching shade, I think, of dark, dark, dark red, you know, almost heading towards brown. And it's um it, it's a perfect color for this because it, there is something blood-like um about it too. Uh Ty says, I get pure licorice with the EDP. I'm not complaining. Interesting. Um, alcoholic Nun says, have you had a chance to sniff the glorious vintage hypnotic poison EDT in the rubberized bottle? The modern stuff feels like a pale facsimile in comparison. Well, I probably did back in the day, but I haven't for a long time. Maybe I need to, to add that to my must buy one day, you know, vintage must buy one day list. Um, Dusan says, I'm waiting for the top 10 opera scents. Oh God, I don't know anywhere near enough about opera to be able to do that. I'm sorry, I'm a real, real Philistine when it comes to opera. Ryan says, my monkey brain just reverts back to incense in regards gothic and scary. And so Robert Piguet's Casbah, uh, a cold incense. We have got a Piguet coming up, but I bet it's not going to be one that many of you will, will be able to guess. I'll tell you now that it's not, um, it's, it's not, uh, it's not fracal because I thought that would be a bit too obvious. Um, Ty says to alcoholic nun, I have a bottle of vintage hypnotic poison with a rubber red bottle, and I can confirm that today's formula is indeed watered down. I need to, I need to hunt this down, don't I? Okay, and as we're nearly at the half hour mark, I should do the fifth one. The fifth one is actually one that I discovered for the first time not that long ago, and I did a video on it because I thought I really wanted to share it with you. This one is from 2009. Apparently, it keeps kind of coming and going. Uh, it's it's technically attributed to Comme des Garçons. Here it is. It's Daphne, the scent that they did as a collaboration with Daphne McGuinness, composed by Antoine Lee. Uh, but I think now, when you can get it, you can only get it through the Daphne McGuinness um, site. And I think it's available for shipping only in the UK, but all of what I have just said could be completely wrong. So please don't hold me to it and just see if you can seek it out yourselves. Um, Paolo says, Midnight Poison says hello. <laughs> Say hello back to the to the um, long gone missing, is it? Because Midnight Poison has gone, hasn't it? Tender Poison has gone and Midnight Poison has gone as well. I'm pretty sure, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Wasn't that the Olivier Cresp one? Daphne says, Ty, my love, used to have a bottle of this years ago. I really, really like Daphne. Very, very taken with it. Uh, this is this is back to our sort of vampish tuberose mode. Um, but so different from the Lutins. If I can get my blotter of the Lutins, yeah. The Lutins starts getting just colder and colder and chillier, which I love about it. Really, really love about it. Um, and... The, the the Daphne, Daphne is very much like a sort of tuberose heavy, more feminine version of Et à Libre d'Orange Rien, which was also made by Antoine Lee, in the sense that it's just a massive, massive leathery tuberose, which feels as though it's got everything, including the kitchen sink thrown there. It's sticky, it's syrupy, it's gloriously diva-like. I mean, it absolutely announces its presence the moment it emerges from the bottle. Um, and it's just genius. And, and it takes on a very, very particular shape in the air when you wear it, a shape not unlike the shape of, of the bottle. You know, it, it creates this, this aura around you, this, this, this sphere of scent, this globe of scent, almost. I'm going to pause for a bottle because there was one comment that I saw that I thought I must, must, must um, respond to this. But where is it gone? Where is it gone? Um, oh, come on, please, please let me find it now. We've got Daphne. Oh, has, has it been deleted? Um, who was it? Who was it? Or maybe it's one of the ones that's been retracted. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe some, maybe for whatever reason it's been retracted. And um, ah, no, here it is. It's Night Night. Thank you, Night Night, who says, Mr. P, you convinced me to pick up a bottle of Adorem, and I feel that will be a good choice for Halloween. Now, 
if you don't know what we're talking about, then search my videos for a review of Adorem, which is a limited edition composition made by Fabrice Pellegrin in association with Ney magazine. It is, it's definitely, absolutely one of my favorite perfumes of the year so far, one of the best incenses I have ever smelled. And I wanted to pick up on that comment because I just, a few weeks ago, uh, it happened to meet the perfumer Fabrice Pellegrin at an event in London. And I, one of the first things I wanted to say to him was how much I adored Adorem and how brilliant I thought it was. And I, I think he was very, very pleased to hear that, you know, that actually it had been tried because it's a scent that was in, you know, as limited distribution as you could get, literally just being distributed by one magazine. And I think maybe potentially by, possibly by Lucky Scent in the US. But if there are any bottles of it left, and if you would like to add a, a truly stupendous incense to your collection, then, then grab a bottle of Adorum. That's the trouble with these scents that come in like in these 15 mil bottles and that are limited editions. You want to smell them, you want to enjoy them, you want to wear them, but at the same time, you don't want to, you don't want to finish your bottles off either. So Daphne, anyway, um, definitely gets on here. You're all still talking about poison. Paolo says hypnotic poison makes me feel like an evil Barbie. That's what they should do in the sequel. Somebody, if you have any contact with Greta Gerwig, tell her she needs to do an evil Barbie movie. Alcoholic Nun says, I love poison in all its iterations, but feel as though the eau de cologne is criminally underrated. One of my favorite fruity accords like honeyed wild berries. Fantastic. Night Night says, I'm glad you got to tell Fabrice Pellegrin how lovely it is. Um, John says, would Adorem be a redundant purchase for someone who owns Avignon? No, 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 no. They really are quite different from each other. The Adorem is, is much darker and more volcanic and just deeper. Avignon is superb. And as you know, regular viewers will know, Avignon is one of my all-time favorite incense compositions. That is like walking into a, a Catholic church. Adorem is, is something completely different. Adorem is though is as though the incense is, is 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 erupting from a volcano. It's like lava and incense combined. Really, really fascinating scent. Um, and Rachel agrees with me, says John, not at all. No, no, no. I'm glad you agree, Rachel. Um, right. So at the half hour mark, or just gone over the half hour mark, I should tell you that you are watching episode 404 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, and we are doing this year's Halloween list. Top 10 perfumes for Halloween 2023, the theme being vampires and Dracula. And I should also say at this point that if you're enjoying the video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up because that helps with lots of things. Um, and uh, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. And if you would like to find out how you can support my work, you should be able to see a link to my coffee page in the video description below. And also, please do send me ideas uh, for videos that you'd, you'd like to do in the future. I think maybe we might have to do the Madonna one. You know another one? I'm a Madonna geek. I'm, I'm a literature geek. I'm a, I'm a you know, self-confessed perfume geek. I'm also, and I don't know if this has come up before on this channel, I'm also a Doctor Who geek, or at least I was a geek of the classic series. And, and Doctor Who... Um, celebrates its 60th anniversary on the 23rd of November. So maybe we need to do something related to the good doctor and his his travels in the TARDIS. Um, Maudlin says, hopefully this 666th episode <laughs> will be a future Halloween episode. Oh, let's see. Gavin says, not a Doctor Who geek. Yeah, I'm afraid so. But as I say, of the classic series, does that mean, does that mean you've completely, you do, have you unsubscribed and have you, have you, have you left the room? On which note, we should carry on. We've got five to go. And now we're on to the we're on to the Piguet. And this is a <coughs> Piguet from the it's one of the modern Piguets, okay? So it's not one of the originals like Bondi or Fraca. Um I wanted to uh I, I no not wanted to, I considered uh, including uh Fraca, but then I thought, you know, another tuberose, that's quite an obvious one. And and I wanted to go for this one here because I I consider this to be a very, very, very disturbing scent, a very, very strange scent. Um, it's from 2019. I don't know who the perfumer is. There isn't a kind of official credit to the perfumer. A lot of the scents from that time were made by Aurelien Guichard, but I have no idea whether that applies to this one. This is, this is Atomica. Now, how many of you out there are aware of this one? really really weird but but it's a it's a weird one um that 
it, it kind of takes its time to display its weirdness. Let me just bring up the official notes there as I'm talking to you. No, that's not it. Do I not have the official notes for this one? What have I done? No, oh, never mind. Perhaps I didn't manage to get them. But I remember what they were anyway. Um, yes, let's have a spray. Let's have a spray. Um, I haven't tried Atomica, says Ty. I know none of them. Um, and love weird, says Rachel. Ilias says, that's weird for sure. Scary stuff, says Ryan. Are you just saying that because I've chosen it or because you agree? It is odd, isn't it? It is all, and already now it's doing, it's, see, you, you smell it. And let's just do a little bit of arranging here. Is this working? Kind of. It starts off, um, hmm. It, it starts off, it, it, it doesn't do, it doesn't have this effect quite so rapidly on skin. It starts off as something that you think is going to be peppery, incensey, cedar woody, almost, you know, going in the direction of uh, the original Gucci pour Homme by Michel Amarac from the Tom Ford days. Um, you, you kind of think, oh, yes, it's going, it's, it's going to be quite a suave, sophisticated kind of masculine doing those kind of peppery, incensey, cedary type things. And then it just gets stranger and stranger and stranger. And I can't even fully explain what it is about it that makes it strange. I'm sure there is a good dosage in there of, of, of ambery woods, of quite sort of spiky, angry woods. But they've been dosed in a curious kind of way so that you know, sometimes you detect them and sometimes you don't. It, it doesn't have it doesn't have as huge a sillage as you think it's going to from that kind of description. Um, definitely some kind of, you know, vetiver action type in, uh, happening in there as well. Definitely something fizzing, effervescent like ginger at the top. But a lot of these are, if you think about it, quite dry materials, you know, ginger, cedar, um, vetiver. And I think there comes a point when you're wearing it, and I wore it the other day actually, because I because I hadn't for a while, and I thought I'd put it on this list. There comes a point where the, the the dryness just almost feels like something that is sort of growing all over you, like scales, and then completely takes over. Um, and then that's why I quite liked the Vampire Association because it seduces, it seduces, it seduces, it it um, invades your inner space. And then it goes in for the kill when it knows that you have got no hope of resisting. Um, but it do doesn't do it in that sweet, ambery, Shalimar type of way, because Shalimar, I think, has a similar sort of effect. Whereas this, this is quite lethal. Um, is it a woody version of Kaspar, says Kim? Um, it's not so overtly incensey, and... But yes, I suppose it is It is pretty dry. I mean, it is super, 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 super dry, but really interesting. Um, yeah, do do give it a sniff if you can one day. Um, I can wear it on, on certain occasions, and I think it's the kind of thing that maybe works better in colder weather. because it, It's also got a weirdly green quality, a kind of desiccatedly green quality. Um, so yes, that that's 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 the that's the sort of strangest one for this list. We have got four to go, so we need to get a move on from 2022, which I think makes it the most recent scent on the list. This is one that I reviewed for the first time not that long ago from Maison Crivelli. This is Patchouli Magnetic by the one and only Quentin Biche. Um, Oh, just a quick comment on the Piguet. Ilya says, it was too dry, if I remember correctly, and I tend to like a bit of dampness. I can see the Gucci Purom Association, but that one I found more balanced in its dryness. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Gucci is 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 much more obviously and overtly sophisticated and suave and all the rest of it. The, the, the Piguet is, is kind of interesting. Um, Gavin says, can you present the Madonna top 10 in a cone bra, please? If you can, If you can get Madge, to lend us the cone bra, then I will do anything you like. I'll tell you what, maybe I will do it in 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 a in a tour purchased Madonna t-shirt. I may go as, as far as that. 
the t-shirt that I ordered for the later store actually hasn't arrived and I'm really really annoyed because I want to be able to add it to my collection because I have a t-shirt from every single one of her tours that I've been to. You can still see all of those, can't you? Yes, you can. Okay. Alcoholic Nun says, oh, I enjoyed this one, if I recall correctly. Is it the one with the peach note? Um, yes. It's, a, it's again, quite a strange patchouli, but it works really, really well. Um, oh, Shan says, cone bra or not, please do the list. Maybe I should do it like in a, in a sort of mask with her, as her Dieter persona. Anyway, now we are you you will really make me get carried away and go off tangent if you ask me to do a Madonna one. Um so yes, this is this is the patchouli, which again has a kind of white floral opening, um, supposedly gardenia, which I'm happy to go along with. That ties in as well with the fleshiness, the fruitiness of the peach. Um and there is something metallic, magnetic silvery about it. I feel this is the 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 closest um thing that Quentin Biche has done, the closest thing he has done for another brand to the sense that he's made for Marc-Antoine Barrois. You know, sense like sense like Ganymede and Encelade that have a, a, you know a, a truly bizarre quality to them. I think I think a bit of that style has come through in patchouli uh, magnetic. Um, and and this one, you know, we're, we're just smelling it straight out of the the bottle, but it develops really, really well. Um, and yeah, I could sit here smelling it for a while. But but yes, this was this would be this would be if if the liquid imaginaire is coming fresh out of the grave, patchouli magnetic is when you've shaken off some of the soil and have put on put on a, 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 a more more sort of sophisticated outfit ready to go hunting in the night. And an, another kind of aesthetic that fits well with this is, of course, um, Anne Rice's aesthetic from um, uh, Interview with the Vampire. I have not seen the latest series that's on the BBC, and, and, and I don't plan to watch it. I mean, I'm, I'm not a vampire geek, but I remember really liking the Neil Jordan film from the 90s with... Um, with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. Can you imagine Tom Cruise nowadays doing a role as interesting as that? Now, but anyway, that's another tangent. And I also enjoyed the book, but I read The Vampire Lestat and thought, okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm done now. I don't need to read anymore. But that really, really buttoned up, you know, lace, lace collar, lace cuffs type look is is kind of what we're going for. With I, I suppose basically what the word I'm looking for is gothic, high gothic. Uh, Audrey says that film is such a classic. Um, that, that was a good movie. That was that was a good movie as well. Wasn't that pre Scientology? Says Maudlin. I have no idea. And that is that is one tangent I am not going off on now. Maybe Tom Cruise is a vampire. Says Marks. Well, you never know. Number eight on the list. We mentioned um, Michel Almarac in relation to Gucci pour homme. This is one that he made. Uh, no, sorry, I'm wrong. Oh, no, actually, let's do that one. Let's do that one now. Never mind. We don't, we don't need to go in order. This is one that he made in 2019 for his own uh, brand uh, that he set up with his sons called Parlement de Parfum. And this is Saffron Wood 91. Now, why this one? Um, in a way, because I thought we need we need to kind of do a sort of Dracula goes to Dubai scent, because why not? Um, but also, this scent um, just seems to last forever, to the point where actually you kind of don't want it to last as long as it does. Because, you know, if, if you've sprayed some scent on fabric, if you, you, you want that smell to no longer be there after you have washed said fabric, this stuff hangs around incredibly. So I'm going to do one spray and I'm going to do it very carefully. And, and Madame Persolaise will kill me because I'll get some of the curtains that are right here. Because this 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 stuff is, is inexplicably long lasting. And what's strange is that you don't think at first sniff that it is going to be as long lasting as it is. Right, let's bear with me while we do some, the pumpkin, the pumpkin is too big to take all of this stuff, isn't it? Can I put that there? No, that's not gonna work. Let's move some things around. I'm only doing this as carefully as this because I want to be able to take a good picture afterwards. 
that works that works that works let's do that for now um oh people mentioning clockwork orange oh is this because you went tom cruise eyes wide shut stanley kubrick clockwork orange um gavin says i have never seen clockwork orange do i need to see it yes you need to see it but you also need to read the book um oh, see you i remember when i first smelled this i thought i thought oh yeah well that, that's that's a nice way of doing that kind of arabian saffron rosy leathery thing but then it just seems to bloom and blossom and become bigger and bigger and bigger and then it just sort of takes over and it never dies so this is the undead scent that's why it's on the vampire list because it never goes away um rachel says would you say that ghoul is the vampire version of the middle east islamic world ghoul what do you mean by ghoul? I don't get the reference there. I'm, I'm probably being very, very, very slow. Um, Smark says, I once spritzed a Mattia Premier scent and then took a shower. It was just as strong after the shower. Madness. Scents don't need to be so strong. Oh, Rachel says, let's do a Clockwork Orange top 10. <laughs> that would be really, really wrong. That, no, we, we cannot, we cannot do, we cannot do a Corova Milk Bar top 10 or something like that. Um, so this is, you know, we're putting it as the undead one, but I'm, I'm going to put that blotter somewhere different from the others so that I can see how it fills this room afterwards. Okay, two to go. So next up we have, oh, this is, this is the most animalic one. So you know how in the Francis Ford Coppola film, there are times when, um, by the way, that's the bottle cap. That's, that's not my stomach or any other part of my anatomy making that noise. Um, you know how in the Francis Ford Coppola film, sometimes he takes on the appearance of a kind of werewolf type creature, which is, um, you know, mixing monsters. This this is the perfume for when he, Dracula is in that mode. This is from Parfum d'Empire, Musque Tonquin. Oh, I love this stuff. Really, really love this stuff. Um, <clears throat> and... As I say, this is from 2014. It first emerged as an X-ray in 2012, uh, credited to Marc-Antoine Corticciato or Corticciato, as are all the scents from the range. And I was going to say, look at the color of this stuff, but of course you can't see the color because, because of me making um, aesthetic choices. Right, we need room for one more and the last one. I wonder where the last one can go. Okay, we'll worry about that in a minute. <clears throat> Gavin says, is Baba Yaga Polish? What are you all talking about? The Baba Yaga, I think, is an Eastern European thing, but the Baba Yaga is more like a crone. Am I right? Somebody's going to tell me, you know, Baba Yaga is going to come and get you, is, is very, very much a part of what kids in Poland used to be brought up with. I don't know if they're still brought up with. I should ask my brother. Baba Yaga is Slavic, says make up traffic. Yeah, it, it, yeah, the, yeah. So that's, I guess, the, what I meant by Eastern European. Um, what kind of perfume would Baba Yaga wear? I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe we should ask her. <laughs> um, so this is this is one of the most animalic, carnal, no holds barred, spray me, you know, spray me, spray me with this all over, and then take me out to town and show me a good time type sense um, that I can think of. You know, right up there with Muscat Blancan from Serge Lutens. Officially, it contains all sorts of musks and myrrh and frankincense and rose and tuberose. But there you go. Uh, who, who just said it? Uh, Kim said it best, I think. Musque Tonquin smells like pure decadence, but, but really, really loose, somewhat filthy decadence, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of nude decadence, isn't it? It's a, it's a sort of, I'm just going to lie on this chaise long and you're going to feed me grapes, grape by grape, and people will be rolling around. We were talking about eyes wide shut a few minutes ago, weren't we? But maybe, maybe I don't necessarily picture Venetian masks when I think of Musque Tonquin. Um, but yes, you you fill fill in fill in the image with whatever um, scene from Eyes Wide Shut works best for you in this instance. Um, Shimon, hey, we mentioned Baba Yaga and look who turns up. Shimon says Baba Yaga would wear red Moscow. Shimon, 
from your knowledge, are children in Poland still brought up being scared of Baba Yaga? What was the rhyme that... Oh, never mind. Maybe I shouldn't try to think of old children's Polish rhymes. Rachel says, love, love, Musketonka. I smelled it once and bought four bottles right away. Okay. How many times have you seen Eyes Watch Shot, Rachel? Um, Rebecca says, my mother-in-law wrote Doctor Who, wrote some episode. <gasps> Which ones? Oh, my goodness. And what was her name? Tell us all now. Modern series or classic series? You'd better tell us now before this episode ends, because I will have to keep waffling until <laughs> you tell us who it was. Or maybe you don't want to reveal here publicly. Maybe you could send me a message afterwards. Please, please, please tell me. Um, sweaty sensuality, says Ryan. Yes, that was that was the... Um, the remix of the Bjork song that didn't quite make it. Um, but it's 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 just brilliant. It's just brilliant. Um and I don't wear it often enough. I really don't. But you know, you, you need you need the right time to go wearing this kind of thing, don't you? <clears throat> and finally, 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 Rebecca, please, please, if you're not going to reveal it here, Bjork fan too, says Eco Jock. Oh yes, definitely a Bjork fan. Um we're on to the final one, and it is, I told you there would be a Tom Ford, and you guessed it, uh, from 2007, composed by um, Jacques Cavalier and Harry Fremont. Oh, hang on. Rebecca says, she's the star, Barbara Clark. Oh, I don't, I don't, do I know that name? Maybe, maybe she wrote some of the modern ones that I'm not as familiar with. Anyway. Uh, Jacques Cavalier, Harry Fremont from 2007, which I think makes it one of the original private blends. This is um, Noir de Noir, which is still available because I checked to make sure that it is still available. You you really, really don't know with, with, with Tom Ford at the moment, which ones are around, which ones. Um, Barbara Clegg, actress two. Barbara Clegg. Now, actually, that name does ring a bell. Ugh. I'm just thinking, did she did she write Enlightenment? Did Barbara Clegg write Enlightenment? I need to check it out. Um, if she did write Enlightenment, that, that, that shows I am way more of a Doctor Who geek than I thought I was. Enlightenment is one of the 80s ones. Seriously, for those of you coming to these videos, Gavin says, yes, I googled. Oh my God, that's really bad, isn't it? That I knew exactly which one she wrote. Enlightenment is brilliant. I loved that episode. I love the, the line at the end where the Doctor goes, Enlightenment wasn't the diamond or something. Enlightenment was the choice. What I was going to say is, for those of you who come to these, you know, what these videos wanting some kind of coherent perfume content, please, please, please don't judge me on this video and go to some of the single perfume reviews because I have actually lost track of the number of tangents we've had on this one. Um, Gavin says she contributed to the DVD release commentary. If you have that, yes, I have, but I haven't seen that yet because that was that was that's the the the, the most recent collection set isn't it with the five doctors oh wow so somebody watching this has got barbara clegg as their mother-in-law if you're still in contact with her please tell her that i thought enlightenment was just genius and that line that line of enlightenment was the choice has stayed with me from my childhood days what's a dvd says musk in heaven <laughs> anyway last one noir de noir this is the um this is this is the the sort of suave so no let's do this let's bring let's bring hypnotic down here let's put tom back there which means that i think we can just about still see them all does that work yes it does um tangents are just signs of an excitable mind mr p says ryan yeah but is that a good thing when you're trying to present a perfume video because i have so many people messaging me as well saying just stay focused talk about the perfume Stop going off on these tangents. But this is a top 10 list, and it's a fun top 10 list. And I'm doing it in monochrome, right? So this isn't the usual thing. Do I feel like I'm really, really defending myself here? Um, do a fragrance for each of the doctors, says Gavin. I actually did do that for Base Notes, an article for Base Notes, I think when we were at the 50th anniversary, and it may still be on Base Notes. Noir de Noir is a good peck, says Fabio. Thank you for bringing us back on focus. So what's Noir de Noir? In a way, it's now something that's become a, a bit of a familiar trope. It's another kind of Arabian, leathery, patchouli, oudy rose. But it was one of the first ones in Western perfumery to do this kind of thing. Um, 
and 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 it, it still does it really well because I did I don't think it kind of completely hits you over the head with it. It also has got famously that sort of truffle note in it, which works very very well with the rose. It makes you think of makes you think of une rose, which is now called Rose Tonnerre from Frederick Mal, um, and it's 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 the it's the Dracula that you would I think feel you could quite happily be seduced by and quite happily be bitten by because he seems like a bit of a charmer so maybe it might not be such a bad thing being a vampire after all um the blackness of black or yes we'll leave it we'll leave it at that and i think i will do the the last comment um to maudlin who's trying to be very very kind and saying i actually feel like i can better follow along when there are tangents oh well you must have a mind that works like mine, which is to say that it works in a very, very kind of random, unpredictable way. Okay, for those of you who celebrate Halloween in some way, I hope you have a great time, I hope you have fun. Um, nothing wrong with a little bit of um, dressing up, nothing wrong with consuming some sugary treats. For those of you who don't celebrate Halloween, rest assured normal service will be resumed very, very soon. Um, Thank you very, very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for making this so much fun. I promise I will start giving some thought to some uh, Madonna perfumes. We'll have to do that, I guess, towards the end of November because she comes back to the UK. Not that I know, but I think, I believe maybe she might be back in London on the 5th and 6th of December, but hey, I, I could be wrong. And Barbara Clegg wrote Enlightenment. Um, right, be good. I will see you soon. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and watch out for those vampires. Bye now.